What's up, Internet? My name is Nerdy. And I'm Clever. This is our spoiler chat for episode 7 of the Bad Batch, Battle Scars. We get Nerdy Nightly. And we thought we'd share it with you. That is right. Welcome to another week of new Star Wars content, which makes Nerdy a happy boy. <laughs> I know. Uh, this was a big episode, y'all, because it finally happened. We got our boy back, the one we've been waiting for. Yeah, I mean, you were right. You were <clears> right. <throat> it happened sooner than I thought. You you yeah. were like, yep, <clears throat> next episode they're going to get into it. And I was like, oh, maybe I don't know about that. And I was very wrong. Yeah, I really appreciated the way they brought Rex back. Uh, <laughs> having him be the reason that they got the chips out um, and, and facilitating them getting their chips out, I thought was handled really well. I really appreciated the scene in Sid's... Um, uh, arcade? I don't know what to call that place. Bar, ar barcade? Bar, yeah, barcade. Sid's Barcade. Um, where Rex, and, he finds out they sell their <laughs> chips in, and he is right to his hip, right to his holster. You know what I mean? He's not messing around. He has seen, like, firsthand, even more so than the Bad Batch has, the real downsides of those chips. Yeah. Um, that, I, if you're watching Split Chat for this, you've probably seen Clone Wars. I know you haven't. You, you nut. But um, I'm working on it. The final season, that final scene with Rex and Ahsoka and the clones on that ship is is tragic and it's it's painful, mm -hmm. and the trauma of that lives on in this version of Rex. And they really carried that through in a way that I thought was so well handled. Mm -hmm. Rex felt like Rex, and that made me happy because this is you know, he's 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 one of the best. You know what I mean? Like I love this guy. Mm -hmm. I want him to stay, and he leaves into the smoke at the end, and I was like, no. Well, the, the nice thing, though, is they really left it, like, open-ended. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. we're, we're going to see him again, so, uh, you know, don't mm -hmm. worry too much. Um, the other thing about this episode that was so fun was going to Bracca, uh, yeah. the planet from the beginning of Jedi Fallen Order, mm -hmm. uh, where we meet Cal Kestis, a young Jedi. Obviously, I wanted him to show up, um, yeah. but at the same time, we don't, uh, the events of Jedi Fallen Order, I believe, take place five years after the fall of the Republic. Yeah. We're not near there yet. Yeah. There is, I, I'm not really sure that Cal Kestis is even on Bracca at this point. Mm, probably not. And one of the things I appreciate about that is they are taking us to Star Wars locations that are from other things, but that aren't directly tied to the people that we know those things for. Yeah. Like, I like going to Bracca and it not being about Cal. It's just that, mm -hmm. like, Bracca is a place that you would go totally. if you need a derelict Jedi starship. Yep. Um, and so it's like, these characters have locations in common, but it's not, it's not always, like, the full, like, we're going to Bracca to see Cal, to see, to, to you know. Yeah, they, you know, like, uh, they're setting Bad Batch up as its own thing that's just that's not completely reliant on everything else mm -hmm. and um that can but it be, still takes place in the same universe yeah and yeah. that can be tough to do and, um especially because you know like a lot of fans want to see the stuff that they already know and love mm -hmm. yeah. um and i think like giving the like nod to that but making it its own thing is a smart choice mm -hmm. um it just it lets the show stand on its own which like so far it has i've been re having a really good time watching it yeah, a lot of great character development this week. Yeah. Um, I, I really loved uh, opening up with the idea that Wrecker and Omega have this, their, their own little tradition. Yeah. I think it's so sweet. Yeah. The fact that they go to get, like, the, what is it, the Boston popcorn thing? Some popcorn. No, but we bought that bag. Do you remember that? Ba it's that bag from Costco. It's the, like, the half. The Chicago mix? The Chicago mix popcorn. That's what it looked like to me, because it was, like, two colors. Um, that's their tradition. Yeah, they go get Chicago they go mix. Get Chicago mix popcorn. That makes sense. Actually. <laughs> they throw it on Sid's tab. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, and and it going to like the end of the episode, Rex is like, "Well, we need you. Like your mm -hmm. your skills will be invaluable." And Hunter's like, "Well, our priorities are different now." Mm -hmm. And it's all about Omega. And I really appreciate that. Um, you know, we kind of joke in these spoiler chats about how they're putting Omega in danger a lot. It doesn't seem like they're taking having a child with them very seriously. Yeah. But it's very clear at the end of this episode, like, they are being very carefully, they are thinking about this very sincerely. They yeah. are doing their best for Omega, and... Yeah, it would have been easy for them to just run off and join up with Rex, right? I mean, like, they tried to, right? Like, they tried to pass Omega off in the second episode. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really appreciate, like, the, the development of how the Bad Batch sticks together, and, and the development of this unit is really um, awesome. I, I'm, I'm enjoying that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, it, like... 
And I keep wondering, you know, like, what is it about Omega? Like, like they, you know, Rex kind of referenced it in this episode mm-hmm. as well. It, like, they had, like, a moment. And, and I think that, um, oh, I, I think it's going to be, like, a season finale type of mm-hmm. reveal. I don't know. There's nine more episodes. So there's a lot of potential here for reveals. I, I, I think the one disappointing thing about this episode is the thing that I had said previously is that the moment they get their chips out, I want them to immediately bring up Crosshair. Uh, yeah. Um, and they didn't. And we haven't seen Crosshair since episode two. Um, so it's been five straight episodes, I believe. I think the last time we saw Crosshair was episode two. Um, and so, obviously, the tease at the end of this episode will probably get in Crosshair next week. Yeah. Um, uh, at the end of the episode, they're seen on Baraka by some of the Salvage Guild, who radio the Empire to let them know that yeah. there are people in the Jedi ship. But the, and obviously, you know, Radio and the Empire probably brings Crosshair back into this. Yep, makes sense. Um, I just would, I don't know. I, if, if one of my brothers was out like that, I just feel like that would be like my number one thing. The very first thing, thing. You get your chip out and you're like, okay, how do we go get Crosshair? How do we save Crosshair from this? Because he's not, he's yeah. mind controlled. I wish they had so it. So are all the other clones. Yeah, I wish they had at least mentioned it mm-hmm. in this episode. They mentioned Crosshair cool. earlier in the episode. No, but I mean about like getting his ship out. Yeah, and it was nothing. So. Yeah, it's the it's the weird thing about the show. The show is very adult. The show is much more adult in its themes than even Clone Wars was, and Clone Wars was about war. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, but you know, the show is a lot about betrayal and, you know, political autocracy and. Mind control. Mind and control. Like, consent. Personal liberties. Like. That's yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. I I guess I don't know. Teach him young. Here's my question for you, Clarus. Do you like Sid? Because I really liked her at first. Or them. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go with them. Uh, no? They're, like, very shady. They were so fun at first. Yeah, And yeah. it's realistic. I'm not... It's really... It's well done because it's complicated, right? Totally. Like, I think that it's a... I think that they're a really interesting character. But even when we first met Sid, uh, Sid I was like, oh, yeah, shady. But it, the more you stick around those kinds of people, the more and more you just see it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, it, it became uh, much more apparent in this episode. Yeah, it's like, um, oh God, I don't like you anymore. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird because they definitely have only their personal interests at heart and mm-hmm. nothing else. Um, what about so, the uh, the Sarlacc fight? Yeah, that was weird. It was like... Oh, there's a thing in the water. I don't know if it is a Sarlacc, um, but... That's what it looked like, though. Definitely looked like a Sarlacc. And I gotta say, Wrecker one-on-one with a Sarlacc... Wrecker would I take Wrecker. Yeah, yeah, I'm all my money's on yeah, Wrecker. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I thought, like, Hunter was gonna have to dive down there and save it. I thought they were gonna have to do some shenanigans. And then they were just like, nah, Wrecker's got it. Nah, Wrecker is good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, obviously, probably the, the, the biggest moment in the episode, in this one, Wrecker turning on the Bad Batch. Yeah. And uh, wrecking them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he's he's the, the big strong one and mm-hmm. they were surprised. And also, like, you don't want to hurt your friend, right? Yeah, so you, your phaser's just stun. Yeah, you have to find a way to subdue, which is why Omega, like, Omega gets chased by Wrecker and has a gun and is like, I don't want to hurt you, right? Cause yeah. She doesn't know what to do in this situation. If she... When her weapon doesn't have a... Uh, I mean, maybe it does, but we have not seen her weapon have a stun setting, right? That big gun? I doubt it. No, her like... um, bow and arrow thing. Oh, yeah, no. But so... she was using a big gun. She wasn't using her bow and arrow. She picked oh, up, right, right, she picked yeah, up she a picked gun. Up, yeah, yeah. Which, like, she may or may not know how to properly use, to be honest. I, I True. don't know. Right? And Thankfully, she's... Rex was there. Yes. A boy! Yes. He looks so good. Yeah, I was like, th- I was like, there's no way. I was like, this show is about to get really adult, but it did mm-hmm. not. Because um, I was like, oh my god, no. Could you imagine, like, dealing with... Like, Rex if, killing... Or, uh, Omega, Omega, like, Omega. shooting Rex. Or Look, Wrecker, Wrecker, he, he, sorry. Uh, yeah, Wrecker. Uh, here's the thing. Let's be honest. We've seen Wrecker get shot so many times in this show, he'd be fine. He, we have seen like, Wrecker get yes. shot <laughs> repeatedly. Sure, he would likely be fine, but like Omega as a child shooting her friend <laughs> is like yeah, a Yeah, I feel like, like uh, weirdly, I feel like Wrecker is the best equipped on the Bad Batch to help her get over that. He would make it fun. 
Yeah. He'd be like, oh, I've got, ah, oh, you just gave me another Scarlet. This one's you. This one's Hunter. This one's Crosshair. You know what I mean? Like, he would just be like, ah, and now you're officially part of the team. Yeah, I That guess. voice hurts my throat. D. Bradley Baker, how do you do that? Props to you. Props to you. Um... <coughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm glad that it kind of went the way that it went, but I was mm-hmm, a little yeah, yeah. worried there for a second. I was like, oh no, this is going to get really rough. Um, the the, the storyline I'm glad they didn't go with, which a lot of these kind of stories tend to do, is the like, oh, you scared me, so I'm going to like stay away from you. Yeah. But Omega actually goes the complete opposite route. She will not leave Wrecker's side when he's out on the table. And I thought that was really sweet. Their relationship really is the core of the show to me now. It's so Wrecker beautiful. and Omega... Wrecker is my favorite character on the show. I love that yeah. big, dumb brute. He is literally the sweetest, funniest character. And yeah. I just, I stand him so hard. Yeah, he's great. And his relationship with Omega, really, like, that is the that is the central relationship of the show for me right now. Um, Which is funny. I thought it would be Hunter and Omega in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, Hunter, here's the thing. Hunter is so, Hunter is so, like, thinking about the bigger picture that sometimes he doesn't feel very invested in the like interpersonal relationships yeah he is so like we have to get this done Mm -hmm. that he's the leader yeah but not in a it's interesting hunter isn't a leader in the like connected way he seems almost disconnected at times which i feel like is a really which is a really effective thing for like a military leader but it, it just is interesting i feel like you know, Tekken and um, Echo have this sort of relationship, and Omega and Wrecker have this sort of relationship, and then Hunter just kind of, like, orbits them. Well, that and, like, no one else... Like, the only relationships I feel like we have a good understanding of are Omega and Wrecker, and mm-hmm. then... And then, I guess, Tekken and Echo. But n- n- not Hunter with anybody else, or, you know, like, Wrecker and Tech. Like, I don't, like... You know, it, mm-hmm. it, it feels like they've really focused... Focused on, like, Wrecker and Omega, and then, like, Tech and Echo kind of have their, like, bantery, like, Tech and Echo fun. are being treated like the droids of this show. Yeah. In a really funny way. Like, they literally, like, in, in the way that R2-D2 and C-3PO exist within the original trilogy, mm-hmm. Tech and Echo exist within this show. Yeah. Where, like, Tech is, Tech and, neither Tech nor Echo have had any, like, character development. No. So much so that Echo is sold as a droid. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, literally sold as a dirt. But they're, they are the comedic banter doing stuff behind the main three. You know, you literally have, like, Wrecker is Chewbacca, I guess. Um, Omega is Luke. And then you have, like, Han Solo in Hunter. And then you have yeah. C-3PO and R2-D2 that are like, oh, all right, go go do the thing. And Tech is like, I found out that you can do this thing on this planet. We're going to go there. And then Echo's like, I'm going to plug my arm into the wall. And I am R2-D2. Beep, beep, boop, boop. I just don't swear as much as R2-D2 does. Because R2-D2 has a potty mouth, y'all. We all know it. It's just interesting. Like, if you look at, like, the dynamics of Star Wars and kind of, like, the archetypes of the storytelling that typically go into a Star Wars thing, Tech and Echo are the droids of the show. Yeah, kind of. I see that. I don't know about, like, the other characters so much, but... Oh, no, no, I just meant, like... But it's for a comparison, I, I understand. I just meant in the sense that, like, Wrecker is the, like, big brute who's, like, kind of comedic, mm-hmm. um, which Chewbacca fits into. Mm-hmm. He's, like, physical brawly. Omega's the wide-eyed, oh my gosh, look at the stars, we're flying, it's yeah, hyperspace. Yeah. And then Hunter is, like, um, if Princess Leia and uh han solo had a baby that wasn't an that evil wasn't angsty man child solo yeah okay mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. gotcha 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. uh yeah does I that make sense yeah yeah for sure yeah. i just yeah i would like to see more of the other relationships me too in the show so hopefully mm-hmm. we get some of that you know? i want more from echo i i'm not gonna lie echo is such an important character in clone wars mm-hmm. um and i feel like echo's kind of been like given short shrift here a little bit yep um, and I, I would like to see them give a little bit more to Echo, because Echo is, I cried when we lost Echo the first time. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. genuinely cried at that episode. It was very sad. Yeah. And when we found out that he was still alive and he wasn't dead, it was like, that was like fist pumping, like, oh my god. Also very sad, because like, you find out that he's been, you know, basically turned into a computer and held hostage for years. Um, and so like, you know, Echo's kids just, show. Echo's a, yeah, 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 kid's show. 
<laughs> um, Echo's a great character, and I, I feel like the show, of the clones, I feel like he's had the least to do so far. Yeah. So I hope they find something for him to do. I'm a little worried they're going to get Crosshair back, and Echo's going to get pushed even further to the side, but... Yeah, we'll um, find out. Give Echo stuff to do. He's great. Yeah. He's great. Yeah, I'm a fan. Also, I, I don't really know how he, like, shoot, he holds a blaster. Because he only has one hand, but it's fine. I mean, yeah. Maybe, like, plugs into the blaster. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, is there anything else we need to talk about? Did we miss yeah. anything? No, I think that was it. It was a great episode. I really enjoyed this one. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I would because Rex is there and Rex and... He's my boy. Yeah. My boy. Um, y'all, if you liked the episode, uh, talk, talk to us in the comments down below. Let us know what you thought of it. Let yeah. us know what you know what you thought of our thoughts. Uh, let us know your favorite moment from the episode. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, there were some good ones in this one. I was trying to think of my favorite episode, but I don't really have one. Probably Omega. Si Actually, no, it's Omega sitting by Rutgers' bedside. Favorite moment? Yeah. Yeah, that was my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel that. And her not, and her being like, nah, I'm, I'm not saying her, I'm not leaving until he wakes up. I love that. Yeah, that was, was really sweet. sweet. Yeah. Um, if you dislike this video, uh, hit the dislike button, leave me in comments down below. The algorithm god is hungry, and we must feed her. As always, you can follow us over on Twitch. I'm over at twitch.tv slash nerdy nightly. I'm over at twitch.tv slash Clark Takaris. And as always, my name's Nerdy. And I'm Clevers. Do something nerdy tonight, you dang nerds. Bye.